Tonight, we've discovered so many people are sick right now. Bay Area pharmacies are rationing cough syrup. It is so bad. Pharmacists tell Kate Kagarin they have never seen anything like it. Kate? Well, Veronica, imagine being the patient. In this case, that happened to me, and I couldn't find it anywhere at any Walgreens at the time when I was sick. On top of that, I called CVS, Safeway locations, not just here in San Francisco, but in Oakland, also in San Jose, and they're out of it, too. <coughs> it was New Year's Eve. Instead of energetically getting ready to celebrate 2015, I was at a pharmacy. And so was everyone else. Promethazine with codeine, it was out. Not just at my Walgreens pharmacy, but my pharmacist said in all of San Francisco. So I waited. A week goes by. Another pharmacist tells me the same thing, but told me they didn't expect another shipment until February. But today I got a call. It was in, but there was a catch. I had to pick it up at a pharmacy across town and... The pharmacist at the Walgreens where I picked up my cough medication says they're so strapped for resources, they're only handing out four ounces at a time, even if your prescription calls for more.
In Ukraine, these troops are known as cyborgs. The soldiers defending Donetsk airport from heavily armed Russian-backed fighters have taken on a semi-mythical status. Military spokesman Andrei Lysenko said Tuesday, despite intense fighting in recent days, the airport was still in government hands. It is difficult there. A building of the new terminal was partially destroyed. There are wounded cyborgs, but it did not affect the general situation. Donetsk airport was built only three years ago. Its now devastated shell has taken on new importance, says analyst Andy Hundar of the Ukrainian Institute in Britain. I'm Alex Sawyer. This is your exclusive Washington Times Daily Briefing. Thursday marks the 42nd anniversary of Roe v. Wade, the Supreme Court case that legalized abortion. Representative Marsha Blackburn and Representative Trent Franks are calling for a vote on the same day on the pain-capable Unborn Child Protection Act. It would stop abortions after five months, the threshold which unborn babies are said to feel pain. More than 18,000 very late-term abortions are occurring in America every year and placing the mothers at ex exponentially greater risk and subjecting their pain-capable babies to torture and death without anesthesia. While people are attending the March for Life in D.C., lawmakers in California are pushing for a right-to-die law. This legislation comes after the highly publicized death of a young woman with brain cancer who moved to Oregon so she could legally end her life last year.
Rosemary, the baby we're told is very young, possibly a newborn. And at this point, it is still unclear whether or not this baby will survive. Take a look. This is what we found when we got to the scene. This is in Pemberton Township, Burlington County. It's Simontown Road near Stockton's Bridge Road. Police there tell us they got a call just before 11 o'clock last night. Neighbors reported commotion out in the middle of the street. And that's when officers found the baby who was lit on fire. That baby was flown to the hospital and we're told was alive at the time. Now, we're also told a woman about 22 years old was at the scene. She was taken to a nearby hospital as well. Now, as of early this morning, investigators were still trying to figure out if she is the mother and if she was the one who lit the fire. But those two, police tell us, were the only ones in the street at the time. Of course, we have been making phone calls. We've been calling the Burlington County Prosecutor's Office trying to get more information. But the burns to this baby, we're told, are very severe. Two Westland teenagers murdered execution style in a vacant Detroit field. About two and a half years later, their killers are going to prison for life. Fox 2's Amy Lang with more from today's emotional sentencing. These families have waited so long for justice. Finally, their opportunity to address the men who killed their sons. But what one of the defendants had to say to them left everyone shaking their heads. Stripped of clothes, stripped of possessions, stripped of innocence, and then stripped of life. Joshua Bobish describes the brutal deaths of his brother Jordan Bobish and his friend Jacob Kudla. The teens from Westland went missing in July of 2012. Their lifeless bodies discovered days later in a field on Detroit's east side. Everything just aches and it's just a totally senseless crime how you can march someone on the middle of a field and execute them. I mean, we're not a third world country. You know, sometimes I wish it did happen in a third world country because it would be a lot different outcome of this whole thing. Instead, these two men, Frederick Young and Philando Hunter, were sentenced on this day to life in prison without parole for robbing, torturing, murdering the two teens. Not only did the defendant take away my son's future, he took away my future. My future as a mother my future as a grandmother. I have sorrow in my heart, soul, and every fiber of my being today, and I will carry that with me for the rest of my life here on earth. The mothers of the teens expressing the deep, devastating pain and loss left behind. Yet when Young had his chance to apologize to the families, he did nothing of the sort. I'd like to say sorry to the families of Ayanna Jones, Michael Brown, Eric Gardner, and I want to apologize to them for not being able to get justice for their loved ones who was murdered in cold blood. And in respect for the peaceful protest, I want to say, hands up, don't shoot. Black Lives Matter. That's it, Your Honor.
released, 50 U.S. law enforcement agencies are now using the handheld Range R radar device. This is a look at the device right here. Now, among the agencies is the FBI, U.S. Marshals, and they've been in use now for more than two years. Here's how they work. An officer stands outside of a building, places it on a wall like a stud finder inside your home, and then sends a signal back to him. If it detects movement, it can tell how far away that movement is. Now, it doesn't show an image of what's actually happening inside. 